Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone's holiday season was joyful and that your families are all safe and healthy. I want to take this time to thank all the people who made the 2020 NFL season happen. There are so many people behind the scenes whose tireless efforts buoyed the players, coaches, football ops uh, folks, enabling us to get, to get this done. Uh, first, I want to thank ownership for allowing us to do what was financially necessary to allow us to operate as close to the no norm as possible. Given a, a new head coach and uh, some of the situations that other people had, we were able to go over to MetLife and, and have as normal a, a training camp as we could. So uh, I can't thank ownership enough for that. Uh, specifically in our building, I want to thank Christine Prokops, Bill Heller, Justin Warren, Victor McLaughlin, Jerry Mead, Kevin Abrams, and of course, Ronnie Barnes. Their efforts enabled our season to happen as close to normal, whatever that is now, as possible. And um, we owe them all a debt of gratitude. Um, our football team made quality strides from, from beginning to end. We certainly have areas to improve upon, uh, but Joe and his staff had a productive, very productive year. And now as we enter our roster building season, we have the full realization there is still work to do. We just got off, off with John, obviously, and he, he kind of echoed some of your sentiments, but also pointed to 2018, which was obviously your first year as general manager, and said, as an organization, you guys have acknowledged some miscalculations that you guys made. Um, have those miscalculations set you up for success now because of what you learned from what you did back then? Uh, and do you feel confident that the lessons learned the last couple of years have put you guys in a position to succeed? Well, I, you know, Ad, I'll tell you this. You know, we're always learning, okay? Does it, you know, and to, so the, the shot, the cliff notes answer you to your question is yes, okay? Um, you're always going to, you're always going to learn. I understand. I I go over every, every final decision we make. I review it in my head over and over and over again, good or bad. Oh, by the way, you know, I review it over and over again because you certainly don't want to repeat mistakes. And, you know, and, and you do that and you got to be honest with yourself. You have to debrief and you, and you got to be brutally honest with yourself. So, to, you know, to, as, as, as I've already, you know, admitted, you know, 18 was not a stellar year personnel wise, but we've learned from our mistakes where we, our processes are better. And uh, I think, you know, this past year sh showed the fruits of that both in free agency and in the draft, and I really believe strongly we'll continue to, in that vein. Mark Penizero, New York Post. Hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, can you be specific about uh, the things that you saw in Joe, in Joe Judge this year, and, uh, and what was your reaction to his reaction to what went down in Philly uh, on the last night of the year? Well, Mark, how you doing, kid? The, 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 you know, the bottom line is – you know, with Joe is his big picture view and then the follow up on the attention to detail. That's what's really critical. So he, he, he starts at A and gets to Z. OK, um, so that that is huge. I mean, that is really huge. I mean, obviously, he's a very bright guy. And uh, but that's that's what, you know, is, is really sticks out in my mind. Just as it, you know, is the big picture and then the attention to detail. No, no details too small. That old saying, the devil's in the details. So, you know, he's, he and his staff, are, are, you know, he is really tuned into that. Um, as far as what he said the other day, you know, it's, he said what he said. And uh, uh, at, at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I, I obviously, it's, it's, it's about playing 60 minutes. It's about giving the fans their money's worth. And it's about, you know, that's how you, it's, how, it's really how you, sh how you live your life. So, you know, he said what he said, and, you know, time to move on. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. I'm Rock, Newsday. Hi, Dave. Uh, I'm curious, uh, you know, when you start putting commas after people's names with their age, you know, it's usually an indication that the end is near. What, uh, you know, what is Dave Gellman, comma, almost 70? Uh, how, long does, how long do you want to stick around for? Well, you know, it really is dependent upon the Lord how long I stick around for. You know, we're all day-to-day, -day, by the way, in case anybody missed that point. Uh, you know, Tom, I feel fine. I feel good. I'm excited. Uh, you know, I just want to keep going. You know, I'm, I, 
I don't know where this retirement stuff came from. I, I have no idea what that's all about. There are probably some people that, you know, but at the end of the day, I feel great. So let's keep going. And if I could ask you a football question, um, do you feel like you have the ability to keep your defensive line intact or are you going to have to make a decision <laughs> on uh, one or the other? There well, the, the, the toughest thing for us uh, right now, frankly, is we don't know what the cap number is going to look like, Tom. That and, and That's a problem, okay? We, um, you know, I mean, that's a – we're not going to know for a while, and you know that's going to dictate, you know, obviously how you operate. Uh, you know, we've got cap space, we've got room. We don't have as much room as you never have as much room as you want to have, uh, but we've got cap space. We've got room to do the things we feel like we need to do initially, uh, but again, it's a lot of it's going to be about the caps. You know, what what, you know, the the, the drop that it's going to take, how far, how far of, of a plunge is it going to take? We don't know. They've. You know they're talking 175. Who knows? So we'll we're just gonna we'll, we'll plan, and then once we know the number, we'll get moving. Dave Politi, NJ.com. I'm sorry. Hey, hey Dave, you had your team had one win against the team with a winning record this year, and was outscored 73-26 uh, during a three-game losing streak in December. I guess for fans who aren't seeing what you call quality strides, where 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 would you say the quality strides are? Well, I think we've. You know, first of all, the culture piece. I know it's over, it's talked about, but it's important. You know, you have to know how you have to learn how to win. You have to know how to win, Steve. And I, and we've made progress there. Uh, the locker room is terrific. We've got great leadership. We've got a young club. We've got a you know a young team. And and I just you know I, I understand that. I understand that. But um, at the end of the day, we've got we've got to continue. This is an important off season, off you know roster building off season for us. Uh, we've we've got some solid pieces. We've built up the lines. We've got you know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, uh, we've we've done some things. We got to get you got to you know we have to continue to get good play good players and part of it's be getting playmakers because that's what you're referring to. Uh, so that's I mean this is something a, a, a goal of ours obviously for the off season. And Valentine, Big Blue View. Dave, I was going to ask you about the playmakers, but, you know, you just kind of addressed that a little bit. So let me ask you about Daniel. Where do you see him, you know, two years into uh, into his tenure as, as Giants quarterback? Well, you know what? He, I, I felt, um, you know, obviously he flashed last year. He had, you know, some big games and played well, and and uh, then he had games, you know, not, that weren't so great. You know, this year, he early in the season, he was struggling with his ball protection. Uh, we all know that. Uh, the second half of the year, he, you know, unfortunately he had that blip with the hamstring. But, you know, he, he finished the season very strong. He played well against Baltimore despite getting, you know, chased all over the place uh, to a degree, made some big-time throws. And then really and truly, I, you know, it, it, it may sound trite, but obviously the last game of the year was a playoff game for us. It really was. You know, we, you know, we, we have to win that game. To you know, to to you know, force Washington to, to to win their game, and Daniel had you know, Daniel played very well. You know, he made some made a couple of big time throws, and uh, protected the ball for the most part. You know, the one pick was off of, you know off of Evans hands, but you know the the he, he's he's done a lot of really good stuff. He's made of the right stuff mentally and physically. Um, again, we're talking about a young quarterback who you know has had. You know, two different offensive coordinators in the NFL, two different systems, and obviously, as uh, after his, you know, he had a different one in Duke. So you got three systems in three years, uh, and I thought that he, you know, once he got beyond the hamstring, the last two games of the year, he played well, and we have complete confidence in him moving forward. Patricia Trainer, Chinese country. Hey Dave, how are you? Good, Patricia. Dave, I'm just wondering, you mentioned that you, you feel good, you want to continue, but I have to ask you about the conditions that the pandemic brought on. Obviously, your job changed, or how you did the job, I should say, changed. And I'm just wondering, how did that affect your energy, and have you thought about that moving forward? Well, you know, you know listen, for everybody, I don't care if you're a, a football GM or you're a carpenter or what, whatever, this pandemic is is a load. I mean, it it is a flat load. It makes everybody. It makes everything an event. 
you have to you have to consider everything. You have to consider going to the, when you're going to the grocery store. You have to consider, you know, just everything, absolutely everything. Everything's an event. So, it, you know, Patty, you know, it, it takes energy from everybody. You know, it took energy from you guys. You know, there were days you guys is looking at you know, looking at your four walls. You know, you can't come to practice. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, so it's it it, it takes a mental load on you. It, it puts a mental load on you. But I feel good. I feel strong. I had my 24 month uh, review with my uh, uh, lymphoma doctor, and he says you're healthy as a hoss. And let's just keep moving. So I'm I'm ready to rock. Thank Chris, you, Chris Carlin. Yeah, yeah. I have a two-part question. Um, number one, thanks for doing this. And I guess when you mentioned it with Daniel a few minutes ago, uh, the idea of three offensive coordinators in three years and the potential teams asking to talk to Jason that you might have to go to a fourth, just how that affects the evaluation process. And also, hindsight being twenty twenty, when you look back at how the injury was handled, would things have been better served if – we had held back another week and maybe not played him against Arizona. You know, you can always look at everything, and you know, and, and you know, in, in hindsight, you can reevaluate that and take a look at it. We felt good enough. We felt that he could protect himself and that he could do the things he needed to do, and that's why he played against Arizona. Mark, I, I, I understand. I really understand what you're saying. You know, but we felt strong. You know, obviously, we had the conversation with Ronnie and his staff. And we felt good about it. And, and during the week in practice, he moved around pretty darn good. So, you know, um, so that be as it may, we're fine with that decision. He didn't do any more damage. And, and, and um, you know, it is what it is. The, as far as the potential of Jason leaving, you know, of course it makes you a little antsy. Uh, because it's, it's, you know, just imagine anybody, any of you guys, having your fourth editor in four years. All right? It's the same thing. It's no different, you, you know, you're constantly whatever. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll adjust and adapt and do what we have to do. And uh, obviously anything we do moving forward, um, you, know, is, you know, Daniel's a big part of it. And we're certainly going to be, con you know, con we're certainly conscious of, you know, that piece to answer your question. And, and, and uh, you know, does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. Oh, Schwartz, New York Post. Hey, Dave. Um, you got me? I got you, Paul. I'm here. Good. I hear nope. you. Okay, good. Um, um, you know, I know you're a trenches guy and the game's won up front, but, um, and, you know, you, you, you like defense, but um, the team just didn't score enough points. It's obvious. You know, I mean, you know, 20, 17 points a game just can't win in the NFL. So what, what, what do you say to address that? How much of a – do you have to study everything that happened on offense – I know there was no Saquon, the offensive line, everything, and say we need to find better players to score more points. This, you know, coming up. Well, you know, you can never have too many good players, Paul. You know, a bottom line, and and that's a stock answer that that every GM is going to tell you. You know, at the end of the day, the you know we we need to we need to find playmakers. That's all there is to it. You know, it's it's I'm not um, I'm not sugarcoating it. I mean, last time I you know you know if you talk about philosophically doing roster building it's it's the cue it's the big men allow you to compete then it's on offense it's playmakers and and you and let's go so we we've got to be very you know we're very conscious of it and we're gonna we're gonna find the right guys to help daniel and get us over that hump hey dave i got a big picture question for you i mean obviously there's a lot of talk of progress today but how disappointing is it for you that, you know, here we are after year three and you guys have the top six wins and, and you really only need seven, obviously, to make the playoffs this year? Of course it's disappointing, Dan. It's disappointing not just for me personally. It's, it's, I'm disappointed for the organization. I'm disappointed for the, fan, the players and the fans. You know, sure it's disappointing. I mean, l listen, last time I double-checked, it's about winning. You know, and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm very disappointed. And uh, the, I guess the best thing I can say is, you know, I'm not going to, you know, John said 2018, we didn't have a stellar year, stellar roster building season. It's affected us, but we're on the right track right now. And we've done some really good stuff the last two years. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. Thanks, Dave. Ryan Dunleavy, very close. Hey, Dave, you're going to uh, 
enjoy this question because it's worded a lot differently than it would have been last year. <clears throat> Leonard Williams, the season he had, and uh, almost now, do you almost wish you had gotten something done with him last year rather than giving him the franchise tag? Because certainly seems like the price went up this year. <laughs> so, so Ryan, it doesn't make a difference. You're killing me either way. <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to discuss contracts, negotiations. Did we do anything last year? Did we not? You know, the bottom line is we are, we're where we are. Um, uh, you know, Leonard, you know, Leonard deserves a lot of credit, okay, for, what he, for how he prepared this year. Sean Spencer working with him as a D-line coach. You know, the scheme that Pat has had for him. You know, and, and, and I mean, as I told you, as I said to you guys, you know, before, I mean, he was a, I don't even remember when he was taken. He was a top five pick, maybe, something like number two or four, something like that. Well, it happened. There was a reason that happened. You know what I'm saying? So Leonard did a great job, he did a great job of working his fanny off. And again, the atmosphere that, you know, for our players, the one of hard work, you can have fun, you can enjoy yourself and you know, Leonard did a heck of a job as, you know, in his position, Coach Sean Spencer and Pat Graham and Joe. I mean, it, 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 the bottom line is he thrived in our in our atmosphere. And I'm ecstatic, and, and it's like I tell players all the time, I, I only want you to be successful, and I want you to make me cry when it comes to negotiations. Jordan Rana, ESPN. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Good, how are you, Jordan? I know you, good, thanks. I know you just said we're going to fix this, but, you know, Fans look at it to say three years, we're at 15 wins. How much is the, does it have to be now? Like, at what point do the wins have to come? Uh, you know, they, they obviously they got to come soon. <laughs> you know, the, the, the idea is to win. And, and, you know, like I said, it's, you know, a lot of things have happened and, and we're, on the, we're definitely on the right track. And I just, you know, I, I'd like to believe finishing, you know, starting at the one and seven, we finished six and five, you know, we finished five and three over the last, last eight games. There's a lot of arrows pointing up for us. Have to have a good season, good roster building season right now. And we'll feel a lot better. We're getting there. You, your top priority when you came, you said, or at least one of them was to rebuild the offensive line, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, after three years, where are you, in your estimation, with that rebuild of the offensive well, line? You know, we've got some really nice pe young, nice pieces. You know, Nick Gates stepped in there and had never played offensive center before. And, and uh, you, know, we've, you know, we drafted, uh, you know, we had Will, we got Sean Lemieux, you know, you got Zeit, you got, you know, uh, Andrew Thomas acquitted himself very well when he had that rough, rough patch and then he got himself rolling again. Um, you know, I think this offensive line is is going to help you know compete. I mean, uh, you know, I, you could you can cherry pick here, cherry pick there, you know, uh, I, you know, in terms of which game you want to pick and how the offensive you know the offensive line showed very good progress, and they they they're they're big, they're young, they're strong, and they're tough and they're smart. So we this this O line's got a chance to be pretty damn good. Bruce Beck, NBC. Dave, you know a thing or two about evaluating talent. So how would you evaluate the job you did this year as GM? Well, you know, I don't want to evaluate myself, Bruce. I mean, I, you know, we made, we made some really solid progress. I know everybody's tired of hearing it. You know, I, I, you know Joe and I worked together very well. It was a thrill. It was fun. He's coll collaborative, communicative. We're on the same page, as John said. We don't agree on everything, but if we agreed on everything, you know, as John said, his dad said, you know, he doesn't need both of us. You know, the bottom line is, excuse me, I, we had a good solid year. The, we hit on free agency. We hit on the draft picks as of right now, okay, because, again, I've, I, I always say that y you know about a draft three years later. You really can you know, uh, quantify and evaluate what you've done. We had a lot of those young kids step in and play and help us and uh, showed that they're legitimate NFL players. Uh, and, you know, they have legitimate NFL talent as long as they continue to, to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, to uh, cheese and cream. Blossom. Thank you. Blossom, as long as they continue to improve and progress. So anyhow, 
you know, uh, you know, for what that's worth, I think that, you know, the the you know what we've done here in the in the three years I've been here, is uh, again, it's it's about sustained success, and that's what it's about. Pat Leonard, Daily News. Hey Dave, how you doing? Happy New Year. Good, same to you, kid. Uh, got two for you, if you don't mind. Um, you and John have both made several references to 2018 as a mistake. It seems like you're calling 2019 in the draft and in free agency a success. I was wondering, do you really actually feel that way? And uh, do, What do you think in 2019 were the key moves that set you guys up so well? Well, I, I don't know. You have you had the quarterback. You had Dexter Lawrence. You know, there's a stat. You know, obviously we had no clue that you know, DeAndre could get in that kind of an issue. Um, you know, we, we're just, you know, it's, it's just a constant build, a constant blend. And uh, we feel like the last two years have been solid personnel-wise. Okay, and then my second question would be, do you look at the last couple drafts, you know, at quarterback, for example, there are guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, who look excellent, scoring a lot of points. And then even this year at offensive tackle, Andrew had a rough patch, whereas some people would say some of the other guys played a little bit better. I was wondering if you look at not taking certain players at those two positions and look at what you have, and uh, do you reconsider whether you made the right choice? Uh, you know, Pat, you know, you guys are going to call me doubling down. I'm very happy with what we've done with Daniel and Andrew Thomas. I'm not even going to blank. Thanks. We'll take we'll take two more. Uh, Justin Waters, Tom Kennevin, Justin Waters, Pixie Eleven. Dave, you mentioned off the top a lot of people to be thankful for that you guys have reached this point in the season because there are a lot of uncontrollable factors. Did you scale back any of the expectations this year because the pandemic was happening and that this was a first year, no preseason games, etc.? No, not really, Andrew. You know, it was. It, I mean, this was a crazy year. I mean, obviously, you know, we were, like I said at the top, you know, the ownership, you know, financially supported us. We were one of the few teams in the league that was able to work out of a, uh, out of a stadium and have and be socially distanced properly, have the locker room space, everything that we did over there, and it, it, it allowed us to have as close to a normal preseason as you could have. Not having the preseason games obviously hurt. It hurt everybody. You know, we our situation wasn't any different than anybody else's. Um, and, you know, there were, you know, the, nobody had preseason. And but when you have a really young team, you know, that creates issues. You know, when you're trying to figure out, you know, you know what you have. So, not having the preseason games was was difficult. It really was. But you know, at that point in time, everybody we, everybody's trying to negotiate. You know, the protocols and every, things were changing constantly. And 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 I just thought that. Uh, you know, ownership just gave us the ability to do some things, and and it was really important that we do that for Joe and the, and the staff, given that they, you know, I mean, it, it was you know we came back from Indianapolis last year, the first week in match, and Ronnie came to me, Ronnie Bonds came to me three times and said, Dave, this is going to be really bad, I mean, really bad, and it, by then it was I believe in Italy, it hit there, and he he Ronnie told me. Right, I said, Dave, this is going to be bad. So I walked down this hall to Chris Pettit, and I said, Chris, get ready for us to draft remotely. Get ready for have our meetings. And I walked down to Joe. I said, Joe, you're not going to see your players until August. I'm telling you, that's what we have to plan for. And uh, thank God for Ronnie, you know, for you know having that that foresight, and that allowed us to. I, th I felt like we were ahead of the curve with a lot of th with a lot of the things with the, in terms of how we were set up for training camp and. And how we were set up when we got back here, you know, that's where you know Victor McLaughlin and just you know a buildings guy and Justin Warren, our IT guy, just did an unbelievable job, you know, in getting us set up to be able to do things remotely and be and be spaced out and and all the other stuff. I mean, you know, we had we had actually had setups for all the coaches that we installed in their homes so that if something happened, they could work remotely. That paid off for us. So. There's a lot of things that, that, that people behind the scenes, you know, warned us about, and we heeded their warnings and uh, enabled us to do what we did. But, no, we didn't scale back any expectations. Last Thank one you. here. Last one here, Tom Kennevin. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Hey, Tom. What's up? Nothing much. 
you talked about how the salary cap may hit kind of one of those air pockets. And I'm just wondering how creative will you have to be in, you know, maybe reworking contracts, um, giving less or making, you know, making do with what you have. And have you talked to guys like Nate Solder and things like that and figure out what's his status going to be next year? No, we haven't had, we haven't started that, Tom. I haven't had that conversation with Nate. I mean, you know, he just sees it just ended Sunday. Here it is Wednesday. Uh, you know, this, the, the, the bottom line is until we know, until we have a good idea of what the number is, what the number is going to be, you know, it's it's we'll plan as best we can. Obviously, we know who, who our UFAs are, and we'll you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get moving, and we're going to have to make some some decisions on 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 every on a, on a number of players. So it's it's uh, that piece is going to be uh, interesting to work with and work through, and we're going to do the make the best decisions we can for the New York Football Giants and for our fans.